What is up, boys? So we are back. It is that time of the year. Actually, I don't think I've done... Yeah, I haven't done one of these in a while, actually. I like doing these collection videos because I actually kind of look back on them myself and see how, how far the uh, collection has been growing, basically. But, uh, yeah, so this stuff here is in my closet. I do not want to take it out for videos. Uh, so I'm just going to, you know, talk about them in, while they're in, in the closet here themselves. So we have a uh, Korean strike of Neos on the left there. Then we have an Amiibo for and, and a sealed Metroid Prime remake because um, I actually love uh, Metroid. Believe it or not, that's what that's my favorite. It's one of my favorite. It's definitely my favorite series, but I don't think I can call a Metroid game my favorite because that goes to Boktai. Let's see who knows what that game is in the uh, in the comments. Anyway, so. I also have some Speed Duel product there, Speed Duel GX box, and it's blocked, but that's the first Speed Duel box. I think it's, uh, uh, what is it called, Battle City or something like that? The Battle City box. Uh, and then I have some of the OCG Altis and QCRs in here as well. Uh, we haven't gotten a product like this in, in the TCG, that's why I'm displaying the OCG stuff. But, uh, yeah, there, and then we have Magician Souls. I did just get two QCR Magician Souls pulled recently from the Rarity Collection 2, so I might replace one with uh, what, what the OCG one I have there, and then that's also a Stardust Dragon from the OCG. Uh, I won the Palladium Oracle Mahad. It was uh, a giveaway from Konami about two years ago. It's like a $500 card, so I'm, I'm very happy about that. And then I have the Dark Magician Girl from the Lost Star promo that I bought for about 100 bucks, And now I think it's relatively expensive, or at least last time I checked, it could have gone down. Then I have the normal print of the uh, Black Luster Soldier that I won as well from Konami. We have Dark Magician, uh, what's it called? Ghost Rare in the back. I remember pulling that from a pack of Tario. So I went to Tario one day. There was literally one mini box of Ghost from the Past 1. Picked it up, and <laughs> that beauty was in there, man. Uh, Cyber Dragon Ulti from, from OTS 16, because I'm a GX fanboy. Then we have the 25th Kaiba Briefcase OCG, and the, uh, what's it called, uh, Shining Neos from the OCG side Unity. We have uh, the Platinum Blue Eyes, the What's Her Face You Bell, the loving defender forever and ever. That actually will be a giveaway. Uh, for a thousand subs and that is coming up guys so you know make sure you guys subscribe and ring the bell so you guys are notified of all the uploads and whatnot uh and then finally we have the oh man this is this one's controversial but a lot of people did hate on uh on this this is this was released this year uh and it's basically the oc the the anime versions of the god cards the the uh, artworks the original artworks where the gods were introduced but uh besides that i also have a uh, very messy <sighs> very messy indeed so i have a lot of boxes here with cards and i usually put like more expensive cards in these boxes these are actually pictures of my girlfriend that i am not going to show because you know i had to take them from the closet so uh, you guys don't know who she is because yeah some creepers out there so here, here's some stuff here that I, I don't want to put in binders, you know, necessarily. I might put some stuff in binders, but I think this box in particular has a lot of bangers, like Rarity Collection 1 high, uh, high value cards, Rarity Collection 1 high rarity cards, uh, and then Rarity Collection 2 is pile is starting there. We have the 2024. Four or 2023 tins, you know, some QCRs in here. So, yeah, uh, some boxes in there. I had some of you guys ask me if I sell my cards, and I do. It's just I don't put everything all at once. That's why I have, you know, a whole bunch of stuff in the boxes here because uh, I feel like that's the way to do it because a lot of cards are quite frankly undervalued in some cases, and I'm just waiting for them to kind of go up a little bit in price anyways let's go into some binders and some psa graded stuff all right boys we're starting with binders i do have two higher rarity binders this is the first one and the second one is going to be huge like it's uh it's physically bigger is what i mean and uh, i don't know if i'm gonna actually be able to fit it in but we'll try <laughs> that's what he said but we'll try we'll try man we'll try 
Uh, I do have another binder, actually, now that I think of it. But it, I'm, I was kind of shifting cards away from that binder. So I don't think I'm going to show that one. It doesn't have that many cards anyways. So the first one here, it's this binder I used to put more DM-related stuff. And then I also started adding some 5Ds and GX stuff as well um it's just if it's tan tangential to dm which i'll kind of explain a bit in a bit i put in here so obelisk the tormentor in uh pharaoh rare this is an ultra that's an ultra and this is the uh the secret rare so these are c coming in from king's court that if you guys didn't know there was possibly a, a misprint or or something like that where in the same product you can get both ultra and secret rare versions of the pharaoh rare Weird. Uh, and then we have two Slifer Feral Rares, one of the Winged Dragon of Raw Feral Rare. And if you guys are not familiar with what a Feral Rare is, let me get the Obelisk of Tormentor card is not that good to show off, to be honest. But a Feral Rare basically just has hieroglyphics uh, on the card. The, 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 the sad thing about, about it is that these God cards, the bodies are so big that it's kind of hard to see the, uh, the actual effect of the, the the rarity there so we do have some more rare, uh, some more fair rares in the wings i'll just show those off then we have some qcrs that we got last year and then uh, moving on here we have some misprints from mag mavens that i pulled recently if you guys haven't seen that sh that uh, video make sure you guys do check it out actually i think mirror force might be a good good card to show off what a pharaoh rare is i also think they improved the pharaoh rares so this is from magnificent mavens and you can see there that's the hieroglyphics on the card and that is what you know the notes of pharaoh rare so we got two black luster soldiers hell yeah a blue eyes white dragon i pulled all of these and the gold sarcophagus as well i pulled all those but i bought three neos and then some millennium eyes restrict uh, a while ago, actually, I, I was in a spree of buying some Pharaoh Rares, and then I kind of stopped. I do think they're really, really good investments, in, in my opinion. I kind of doubt Konami's going to be, you know, uh, doing Pharaoh Rares that often, if ever again. We have some more Pharaoh Rares here, but this time from the OCG. And then a Celtic Guardian from, from Shonen Jump, I think. Dark Magician Girl... That's from the movie pack. I kind of started my own little mini Dark Magician Girl collection. And then, of course, we have two of the Dark Magician's 25th anniversary artwork, which, I mean, I, I think they, they were really cool. I bought them out, and recently people have started buying them out. Sorry, I, I shouldn't say I bought them out. I bought a couple, and now people are buying them out. I bought these, uh, uh, like, a year ago, though. So people, you know, are slacking. I am ahead of the trends, boys. Always ahead. Dark Magician Girl, of course, Lost Art. So that's the, my, I think that's probably one of my favorite uh, artworks because she'd be riding the poles, man. And then we we have some, uh, this is, this is uh, uh, very clearly, guys, my channel is not for kids. Like, yes. And, and looking at the metrics, I'm hitting my key demographics. So if I say Stuff like that, just no, I do not target kids. Like, I, 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 yeah, my videos are not made for kids. Stardust Dragon QCR, three of them, and then a Red Ice Black Dragon. I do have more in the boxes that I showed earlier. It's just, uh, you know, I started doing some some movement into the, the binder here. Then we have the whole pot collection here. I do have another pot collection uh, set somewhere in the closet. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people were... We're trashing this set, and then who's laughing now? Because all of these went up in value, guys. And they're probably going to go up a lot more in value. If you guys don't know what the pot collection was, you basically got a whole bunch of figurines of all the pot cards. And then you got a QCR pot of greed. And then the rest of the pot cards were parallel rare. So it's basically like the old school hobby league rarity where it's like very shiny. I, I love this rarity, by the way. I don't know why people were trashing it. I think it's just, it's trendy to hate Konami for no reason. And I try to stay away from that. Like I will attack them for doing stupid, retarded ass shit. But if they do something cool, I'm not gonna attack them just for views. You know what I mean? But uh, okay, so here is some GX stuff. I, I suppose this is, this is more speed duel 
though. Uh, th these are my favorite Speed Duel uh, tournament pack pulls with uh, Evil Hero Dark Guy, obviously, front and center there. And uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be opening up more Speed Duel product. It, the Speed Duel uh, tournament pack that we got recently, though, number four seven i think kind of sucks ass so i didn't buy that but hopefully the next tournament pack is going to be a banger so yes a lot of dark magician girls from the 2022 tins because i feel like this this rarity i always buy some when i i feel like buying some i guess because this is this artwork is really 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 nice first of all it's probably not going to be printed again this is like a 25th anniversary uh, special special thing also the 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 actual what's it called the rarity right uh prismatic seeker rare is really good the colors pop on this and i think people are sleeping on this I, I feel like people just need an influencer to tell them what to buy and then they'll buy it it's every single buyout i swear it's influencer led and a lot of the Yu-Gi-Oh community just doesn't think for themselves. Like, come on, this is this is easy, an easy investment. Red Eyes, Black, Dragon as well. Not that many, but I do have a lot of Blue Eyes as well. Because these, these, actually I didn't really show the Red Eyes. Let's go back to Red Eyes. You cannot tell me these artworks are just straight up dope, man. This is awesome. I actually... The blue eyes kind of grew on me a little bit more as well. So I was more of a Dark Magician Girl fanboy on these, but the blue eyes is also pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Also, th these were being bought out recently, uh, or at least like a, a slight buyout was happening. I think when when we got the latest blue eyes support not that long ago. So, I mean, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then we have some of these OCG. I forgot. Premium pack, was it? Uh, was reprinted for the OCG. So... Yeah, though those are in here. I bought some of them. Maybe should buy some boxes. I don't know. And then we have, to, I think we have one, a couple more actually. So we have Red Eyes, uh, Black Dragon from uh, different different products as QCRs. The Dark Magician as QCR, of course. I'm going to be putting it in a DM binder. We have some more Gods as QCRs. Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. You know, you guys, you guys might think that I'm joking that I really do like Blue Eyes to Twin uh, Toon Dragon. I, I do love this artwork. This is nice. This is a really cool artwork. So, of course, me pulling it, it's going to go straight to the binder. That's it, it is what it is. It's not that expensive, but got to put it in the binder. And then this Dark Magician Girl was from Speed Duel. A lot of this stuff isn't that expensive, guys. I just like putting this in, in the, uh, you know, it's a DM dedicated binder with some GX stuff thrown in there. But, uh, yeah, so Dark Magician QCR, Blue Eyes QCR. This card was also pretty expensive at a point. I feel like these cards are also worth investing because these QCRs are actually different than the QCRs that the, the other QCRs that are out there in the wild. Um, let me see if I can compare, actually, really fast. Uh, the, the, the QCRs that we got in Legendary Collection uh, 25th Anniversary were actually kind of uh, a beta test, if you will, because they were considered QCR, ulti QCRs. These are considered, the the Dark Magician on the left is considered a a secret rare QCR. And the one on the right, I think, is more shiny. The The name is harder to read, for sure, I feel. Actually, I think this one's harder to read now that I kind of think of it. But uh, I think people once people realize that this is like a very, very limited run, they're going to rush to this. Uh, and it could take years, guys. Of course, an influ influencer has to tell you guys what to buy, but you will be buying it. And I don't mean you guys, but, you know, like the 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 global you. I don't, I don't know how to say it, but you bell super rare. I just put it in there because uh, I remember pulling these, these. I remember going to my with my dad to the flea market. And these were what I, I remember pulling these on the flea market. So I'm keeping those. Um, all right. So let's go with the second binder. All right, boys. Holy, this is, this is a monster binder. I definitely don't have everything filled out here. Uh, all the pages. Uh, don't, not all the pages have cards. but So continuing the trend here, the front page is going to be God cards. But these are the, I think they were called Prismatic Secret Rares from the OCG. This is from the God Box. Both of these are from the God Box. That, uh, like the name says, it was a God Box. Because those are actually pretty expensive. So the first couple pages are going to be 
Collector rares, which are basically useless. Thank you, Konami, for reprinting a whole bunch of collector rares. But, uh, yeah, so I started... I, I liked the uh, the Poker Knights, so I kind of started with the King's Court. Uh, these were actually pretty expensive. I bought them relatively cheap, though. Uh, but they, they rose in price a couple months ago when the format changed. I think it was when I SP Little Knight was running amok in the uh, the... the the meta scene, but, uh, yo, actually, everything fits in here, nice, nice, I mean, you guys get to see a lot of the stuff over here that's not necessarily Yu-Gi-Oh! related, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, I'll put the stamps away, there we go, okay, so, yeah, this is basically, uh, yeah, it looks like everything's from King's Court, two lightning storms, I think I pulled, I might have pulled both, actually, and, uh, so this was before I started getting really, serious about how where my money goes in Yu-Gi-Oh! So I used to get, all, when I first started the channel, I used to buy basically every single product. And now I, I'm very discriminant on what I buy. So if you guys have been here with the channel for a while, you will know that I tend not to open side sets anymore. Like King's Court would be one of them. Uh, although King's Court and, and uh, what is it called? Maze of Millennia, Maze of Memories. Those sets are a little bit better. But sets like Ancient Guardians or whatever the hell the set is, not worth it in my opinion because, uh, yeah, stuff gets reprinted to death. Uh, Solemn Strike, Collector Rare, I bought these. Uh, purely, I pulled, should have sold it. Like uh, it, At a time, it was like around 200 bucks. Now it's like $20 because it got a reprint in Rarity Collection 2. I should have sold it, man. Uh, and then the rest. I actually have a, a cool story about these two so in uh in uh what's it called the ebay you can uh bid for stuff right and this guy had these two and i bought them for twenty dollars each and he also sent me some misprints with this so i think it was twenty dollars like it was something really cheap and i actually kind of felt bad so when i when i won the auction i was like ain't no way they're gonna be collector rare and they were collector, and I actually kind of felt bad. So I, I, I definitely gave him a good rating in that regard. This Axis Code Talker is, I guess, considered a misprint because it has doesn't have the shiny foil there on the bottom. But I think that's a widespread issue uh, on all the gold rares or premium gold rares or whatever the frick they're called. Card Trooper had a buy, of course. All these were pulled, though. Eye of Illusion, number one Infection Buzz, two Flame Swordsmen, and then a Harmonic Synchro fusion as collector rares which is pretty nice i feel like a maze of memory i think it's the set kind of treated me pretty well so i will take it i will take it i have illusion was seeing some buyouts too recently so i wonder if that that trend kind of continued all right and then i guess i don't have any more so like i said i stopped collecting collector rares the irony in that because konami treats them uh like shit essentially let's see if we can reduce the glare here that might be better, actually. So, we're starting the Starlight era here. Two or three Elemental Hero Stratos. Thank God they did not reprint this in the Rarity Collection 2, although I might see some reprints uh, relatively soon. Uh, hopefully not, though. So, this is a, a Starlight. You know, I think the light might actually be better, so you guys can see the sparkles. I bought most of these, actually, so... You know, it is what it is. Uh, two Destiny Hero Destroyer Phoenixes. This is actually probably one of my favorites. Uh, it looks really... The artwork is really, really nice. I really hope they don't reprint this as well as a QCR. But they're probably going to in the 2024 tins. Because there's going to be 20 QCRs uh, in that. And I think this is my favorite card in Starlight. Uh, yeah, this has to be... It. I know I just said DPE. DPE, I love the artwork. But this card is so goofy. So this is from Animation Chronicle 2 from the OCG. And OCG cards should be, you know, in Japan, right? Like the language should be Japanese. It should be kanji or whatever. But it isn't. It's in, it's in English. Blue Eyes, White Dragon. And then the, uh, the lore is goofy as fuck. Super rare card. The highest attack and defense card. Too difficult to get. Like, it, it just sounds like someone who doesn't speak English is trying to speak English. And I love that goofiness. Uh, three Jet Dragons in Starlight, which, you know, kind of worthless now because of the QCR reprint. Um, 
Three Dark Magicians, which is probably going to be reprinted as QCRs again in the 2024 tins. Illusion of Chaos, which just got a reprint in the 2024 tins. Pot of Prosperity over here was actually my first Starlight. So I, you know, I don't know. I feel like I, I should sell it, but at the same time, I kind of don't want to part ways with it because it's my first Starlight. I don't know. And then we have two, uh, what's it called? Astral uh, number 17 or whatever. Flew, flew under reason, M pen. And then I think this was my second Starlight pulled. Uh, Black Rose Dragon, man. Ooh, that beauty. That looks nice as a Starlight. Uh, and then I have four Curicaras, which are probably going to get another <laughs> QCR reprint. Probably in Battles of Legend. Uh, Terminal Revenge or whatever the hell the, uh, the set name is. Because, again, that's just the track record Konami is throwing out there. So uh, we got some ultis in here. A lot of hero stuff. Uh, three Nova Masters. And then we have Air Neos ulti. And then an ultra rare Air Neos. I do want more Air Neos. Uh, I'm trying, they're just way too expensive, man. Yeah, we'll go with it. I want some, but they're too expensive. And then we have some, uh, ultis here from my childhood. So I, I have, I don't have that many cards that I kept from my childhood, not through my fault, the fault of my own though. They were just thrown away. Um, and then not by me, like it wasn't on purpose guys. I would not throw them out. We got two Wake Up Your Elemental Heroes as Collector Rares, which is pretty nice. This card was going up in price re relatively recent as well. Uh, and then this is the OTS Ulti uh, section of the video. I have a lot of OTS Ultis. Cyber Dragon, I have eight or nine plus the one in the closet around ten. So, yeah, I mean, if you guys can tell, I really do love the Ultis. Uh, Forbidden Droplet, nice, ha has been seeing some price increases. Although I don't, I don't know if it'll ever touch its peak, which was like two hundred bucks. Like it was insane how much of this card was uh, when when the uh, the pack first came out. Holy, the boxes themselves, guys, were like a thousand dollars to buy a box of OTS Turning Pack sixteen, which right now, if you try to buy an OTS box, it averages about three hundred to four hundred bucks. So. The up charge was real. Um, let's see what else. Is there anything cool? Two infinite impermanences. That's kind of dope. I pulled more Toon Kingdoms than any other ulti, though, unfortunately. We have a Black Luster Soldier as an ulti, which is kind of cool. And then we have a lot from OTS 18, which I think a lot of these are undervalued, by the way, guys. Like Azuz, bro, Azuz ulti is like 20 something dollars. Like, what are you guys doing? This card is not worth $20. Like, first of all, it's a really good card. Second of all, a secret rare is already $10. An ulti cannot be $30. I'm sorry, guys. What do you guys... Again, an influ influencer... Once an influencer tells you guys to buy the Azuzas, you guys will be buying them. I swear to you. Sprite Blue, we got only one Fenrir, though. I didn't open up that much of this product. Um, one Luber. I think I bought this. I also, I think I also gave one away in, in a giveaway not that long ago. We got four Harpies Feather Dusters. I think I only opened up one of this box. Yeah, only one box because, you know, I do like the, love the ulti, OTS ultis, but it's also a pretty expensive product and the videos don't necessarily do well on the channel. Uh, well, I guess it, it, some do, some do. I, that's kind of a lie. Some do. All right, so QCR time, boys. The QCRs are in the back, back of the bus here. So we got a Promethean Princess, I think her name is, yes, a Skull Guardian, and uh, Loving Defender Forever and Ever. I pulled this one, actually. This is probably, like, a, a very unexpected pull. I pulled this in a live stream. You guys should check that out. And then I bought the Loving Defender Forever, because, of course, I did. Uh, I pulled the Skull Guardian. That was actually a box battle with Ram the Man. I, of course, won it. Because, <laughs> you know, I pulled a QCR. Like, there's no coming back from that. And, it, like, not a bad QCR either. And then we have uh, the Gondora or whatever. This is actually an, uh, an ongoing giveaway. Or I guess it was by the time I upload this video. It's probably going to be, you know, the, the giveaway would have ended. But, uh, yeah. So I kept one... Gandora QCR, and then I gave one away. I opened up a case 
of Legacy of Destruction and only pulled two of the worst QCRs. I, I did this in a live stream too. If you guys were there, you guys felt the pain. It was a fun, it was a really fun live stream. That was like probably one of my favorite openings just because of the the the, the interaction with you guys. But uh, yeah, no, it, poll, poll, poll wise, terrible live stream. Uh, vibe wise, really, really good um, live stream. Slepner, uh, the runic main. Then we have Called by the Grave. I, I have some QCRs from Rarity Collection here that I kind of like or that are kind of expensive. Although Boral, Boral Low, the Savage, the Savage, man. Konami savagely put him in the uh, the uh, Forbidden List, so it went down in price. Probably shouldn't even have this in the binder anymore. Uh, I should move it to the uh, closet area. Two Dark Holes, because that's just what I pulled. I also did buy a case of of uh what's it called uh monstrous revenge and pulled uh the princess off camera teller knight tomayas on camera and sky strike mobilize engage in a live stream so it kind of balanced out right where i got a shitty ass legacy of destruction uh case but i got a pretty decent case of monstrous revenge so and then oh man this this card be steel lubion the most expensive qcr sitting at like 230 dollars i pulled this on vacation my girlfriend pulled this like well i guess she picked the pack so i would say she pulled this i opened up the packs though uh yeah so god damn that was a really good uh pull uh and then xtox hydra i bought those because it's a snake it's a pretty good card uh it's a decent card i should say i shouldn't say pretty good let's see i think that's about it i think i have some hobby league oh yeah ghost rares ghost rares in my opinion they they're all right uh, i don't hate them i do like them but compared to other rarities i feel like they're kind of lackluster uh in my personal opinion because first of all it's going to be really hard for you to get a a, a, a a ghost rare that's not damaged, especially nowadays with Konami's uh, quality control, right? It's uh, these, the surface area might be scuffed or whatnot. But yeah, I mean, if I pull them, I'll put them in a binder. I also bought Rainbow Neos because, of course, I did. It's a Rainbow Neos, man. Limited Removable, Monster Reborn, Scapegoat. All these are hobby leagues, so they're similar to the... Uh, the cards that we got in the in the pot collection, basically. Although I think these are a little bit more not shiny but reflective, I guess. But uh, all right, so PSA graded stuff it is, boys. Be right back. All right, boys. We got the PSA graded stuff right here. It's going to be a little bit hard to fit as well, though. But uh, all right. So we have one PSA graded item that I haven't put in the little box here, and that is Arm Neos, because I just actually got this not even a week ago. I, I want it in an auction for 50 bucks, which I feel is pretty cheap. Uh, not now. I mean, like, in the future, I feel this card is going to be not not cheap, but we'll go with. But, uh, all right, so be, before we get to the PSA graded stuff, I think I have some, uh, some Pokemon cards, so... Yeah, so I, I put some of these in uh, these little protective, whatever they're called, hard cases. My girlfriend pulled one of these as well on vacation. Like vacation, vacation, vacation. Uh, girlfriend pulls are just way better, way better. If you if you guys go on vacation and have a girlfriend, let her pick the packs. Is all I'm saying. All right, so I think I'm just, I'm just gonna move it to the side here because, uh, yeah, it takes up too much too much space. All right, so we got a Blaziken VMAX PSA 10. So it's not all of these are going to be Yu-Gi-Oh, but I think it's only two Pokemon stuff. So it's, it will be that boring. Uh, we got uh, another Blaziken. Blaziken V. Blaziken VMAX was the first one. Cyber Dragon PSA 10 as a QCR, because why the hell not? And then we got a uh, Excel Stardust Synchro dragon as a collector rare psa 10 i started buying more psa stuff more psa 10 stuff uh pri prioritizing psa 10 i should say and trying to buy less because i feel like if you buy psa 10 uh, you'll get more value in the long run versus you buying a shitload of psa 9s for example right so uh we got a skill drain psa 9 i mean of course now i'm, I'm gonna showcase a psa 9 that i say that i trying to buy more PSA 10s. 
but I, I bought this for 20 bucks and I was like, ain't no way. Like PSA nine long term, this ain't going to be a 20, a $20 card, man. Yeah. I, I understand why people, people do hate this. And also I did just get a QCR reprint. So maybe it'll be 20 bucks. Thanks Konami. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, future fusion all PSA nine. Uh, is it first dead? It is not. I think this is one of my first purchases though. Uh, one of my first PSA purchases actually. So is this a silver wind ascend PSA nine first edition ulti. So this is, th this is what I mean, right? I've, I've been learning a little bit more on what to buy and I feel like you should be buying more of what you like. So I don't necessarily, I don't hate black wings. I actually kind of like the art, the, uh, the art and the archetype, but I don't necessarily play them. I'm more of a hero player. So I, I kind of stopped buying stuff just because I thought it was cool and started buying stuff that I knew I would like if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, so this this is definitely one of my first purchases. And so is this Tri-Blaze Excel Accelerator Ulti First Edition PSA 9. Uh, those are not that interesting though. So let's move on because I think the next, the next row here is all going to be DM stuff. And it's a little bit more interesting. So we got a... Uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon. Remember what I said? My favorite Starlight was the goofy Blue Eyes card. Well, this is it in a PSA 10. I just had to get it. Uh, and then we have Blue Eyes White Dragon, a PSA 10 from uh, Legendary Collection. So again, same thing. This is like a beta test QCR. So I feel like the, the price is going to go up. All right. And then moving on here, we got an Adidas Collab. Uh, Dark Magician, which is basically a reprint of DDS or Dark Dual Story, Dark Magician. So, you know, I, I had to buy the boy. Not that expensive either as a PSA 10. So we'll see how the price goes. Because, again, Konami keeps reprinting everything over and over and over and over again. Uh, speaking of reprints, <laughs> Red Eyes, Dark Dragon, Starlight, PSA 9. Although this did not see a lot of, of value decrease with the... With the uh, uh, the advent of the Rarity Collection 2. So, uh, awesome, awesome. Then we have Dark Magician Girl, uh, Lost to Art. This is, again, one of my favorite Dark Magician Girl artworks. So I had to scoop it up as a PSA-graded item, although I, I guess I also do have one in the closet. But, uh, yes, yes. And then more Dark Magician. Dark Magician Girl from Rush to PSA 9. Toon Black Luster Soldier PSA 10, which I wish was a uh, first edition, but it is not. This is a collector rare, which is kind of nice. Obelisk the Tormentor. Again, this is one of the cards where I was not really... I just bought it because I thought it was cool, not because I wanted it necessarily. Then we have a Black Luster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos, Ghost Rare, PSA 9. I got this pretty cheap, actually. That's And I, th I actually did think it was pretty cool, so that's why I bought it. And then we have a Black Luster Soldier... Uh, Soldier of Chaos, uh, Feral Rare, PSA 9, which again, I bought these relatively, uh, I think it was away within, within the same week. And they were both really cheap, so I was like, hell yeah, I'm scooping this. Uh, Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning as a Collector Rare, PSA 9, First Edition. Okay, I thought, I thought it was unlimited. And then a PSA 9, Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End, Collector Rare, also First Edition. So, uh, yeah, now we're hitting some stuff that I actually kind of do like, you know, and, uh, the thing about my PSA collection as well is I had, I, I feel like I'm pretty good on it. Like right now, like I don't want to buy, I don't like buying too much, especially PSA greatest stuff. If I'm going to be completely honest, but, uh, yeah, so I think I'm good right now with on PSA greatest stuff. Uh, elemental hero Neo's PSA 10. I just bought this recently. Nice, nice. I bought it with the U Bell Loving Defender Forever. Actually, it came in the same uh, from the same seller, I believe. And and this is not the giveaway. The the other one is going to be the giveaway. It's the same card. I'm just saying more like uh, I bought them together, or you know, within the same span time span, uh, because I wanted to keep one and I wanted to give one out to to you guys as a thank you. Then we have Elemental Hero Stratos LT PSA 9 from an OTS pack. So now we're hitting GX stuff. Stuff that I, I really, really, really like. Uh, E-Hero Stratos Starlight from Burst of Destiny PSA 9. Nice. The PSA 10s, by the way, are super, super expensive. Try not to get the glare on it, but 
you know, it is what it is. Let's see about the the light. Uh, see, the, the lighting here just sucks, unfortunately. I'm sorry, guys. We have Elemental Hero Thunder Giant Ulti PSA 9. Hell yeah, is it? Yeah, it's first edition. Hell yeah. Another Arm Neos. I think I got this a little bit more expensive than the other one. Uh, then we have Elemental Hero Air Neos PSA 9 first edition. If you guys don't know, uh, basically Konami isn't printing Air Neos like ever for it seems like uh, some people speculate that they just don't have the rights to the artwork anymore but it's also kind of stupid because they can just create a new artwork right and, uh, just it's and it's a really odd thing that they haven't reprinted it but uh yeah i'm kind of capitalizing it on a, a little although even if it wasn't being reprinted this is still one of my favorite uh hero cards just because of the colors i love red and the the shade of red of air neos is fucking awesome so I have another PSA 9 Air Neos First Edition Ultra. I'm trying to get an ulti. Elemental Hero Flare Neos Ultra 10. PSA 10. So this one is a 10. Elemental Hero Aqua Neos Ultra First Edition PSA 10. Nice. Nice. Elemental Hero Nova Master PSA 10. Not First Edition though, unfortunately. All right. And the last card. I am covering up the number because I might sell this. I... It got reprinted in Rarity Collection 1, and yeah, let's just say the value dropped quite a bit, so I might get rid of this, uh, but it's Masked Hero Dark Law Ulti PSA Graded. All right, guys, that is it, though. I I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I don't have that big of a collection compared to others, but at the same time, I'm not that obsessed with Yu-Gi-Oh! as you might think. Um, I actually, I, I just kind of like collecting. Like, that's a, that's about it. I, <laughs> I've seen some you, YouTubers, right? And they're like, oh, my $1 trillion collection is just like, dude, you're spending, you have a trillion dollars worth of cards. Like, that's a problem at that point. And I guess, I guess some of you guys might think I, I also have a problem because, I mean, it's, my collection is nowhere near a trillion dollars. Like, I ain't claiming that. But it, it's also not, uh, not cheap. Right, like there, there's some pretty expensive cards that I do do own, and I, I understand that. But uh, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. I'm sure the quality could have been a lot better, and I understand that. And if you get stuck all the way through the video, oh man, you you are a trooper. Thank you, good sir. Or it's probably sir, because looking at the metrics, that's what I attract. Also, that is my demo. It's dudes between 25 to 30 that are male obviously because they're dudes um so i'm hitting the demos guys hell yeah catch you guys in the next one